Today, friends, I'm going to show you how to make a wicked cool 3D printable wavy piano. So let's get cracking. Friends, first things first, this is the wavy piano. This would be like a trophy. This one right here is a keychain. This is a free file that you can find in my profile. I'll make sure there is a link to it in the description. The main thing I want to show you today is how this curve was made. Before I do that, though, I do not want to break my original. So I'm going to click on the gear and I'm going to duplicate it. Before I jump into that, I quickly want to mention my Patreon friends. You can click the link in the description. Of course, you can join for free or choose a membership. Of course, when you join, you'll have access to free files and other cool things. But today, I want to quickly highlight the community. Of course, you do need to agree to the guidelines. But after you do that, it is a fantastic place for us to communicate about Tinkercad and the projects you're working on. All right, so let's get to work on the project. I'm going to move this out of the way and let me show you this part right here. Now, if you're super smart, you'll do this with math. I was just using my eyeball. Watch this, control D. And then if you ungroup it, you can check it out. All right, so let me teach you how I built this. First, we're gonna take this little nub here. I'm gonna do control D, shift nudge to move it away. And if I ungroup it, you can see it was just a squished cylinder. I set the sides as round as I could get it. I cut off a sliver. And if we do control G to group that, I'll show you another one of the cool tricks that I used. If we do R for ruler, let me show you the measurement here. When we click on this, if we set the green measurements to zero, zero, it lines up right with that point. And you can see that this is 45 millimeters across. So then I just simply made another one. Watch this. Control D. And I started nudging it, but I just changed the number to negative 45. That snaps it to the correct distance, but then I did mirror to flip it. And then I also had to move it below zero. So instead of having this at zero, I changed it to the exact math for that. Check it out, negative 2.9 and press enter. And it is perfectly placed. I'm gonna do control D again. Notice it remembered the measurement of the original, so it's already lined up. This is one of the coolest ways you can put the ruler to work. Of course, I did need to take the middle one, and I needed to make it a hole. Once I had that, I could simply repeat the process on the other side, except it went hole, solid, hole. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that this one is different. Let me show you why. If we ungroup it, you can see I've got a hole and I've got a rectangle. I'm going to shift nudge to move that away. And if I group all this, let me show you what happens. We're also going to do top view, flat view, so it's easier to grab only the parts I want. And now when we do control G, check it out. There is a tiny sliver. Could not figure out exactly why that was happening over here. But once again, let me show you the solution. I did ungroup. I simply created a rectangle that matched that same spot and I attached it. I'm going to put this back in place by putting the work plane on that edge, clicking on the shape, doing D to drop. And then I shift clicked those two parts and did control G to group them. I'm going to put the work plane back down on the ground. Once again, choose top view and friends. Now we can do control G to group. And after a moment of waiting, we have got our slick curve that we can use for the rest of our project. All right, so now that we got that created, we're going to make it a hole, bring out a cube. I'm going to take this and make it into a key. Here's what I'm going to do so that it has a gap. I'm going to start with three. I'm going to make it two millimeters thick. And of course, it looks cooler if you make it white. That looks like a key, but watch this. If we change it to 2.9, so now we've got that 2.9 and we do control D and I'm going to set this nudge to 0.1. If I do shift nudge, that's one millimeter, two millimeters, three millimeters. And then I put one more nudge in between them and check it out. There's our gap. Do not click anything else. And if you do control D again and again, you can make as many keys as you want on your piano. Let's hit home and see how far that worked. Once again, I'm not clicking anything, so that way I can keep doing the control D step. I'm gonna stop right there because I'm not trying to make a perfectly measured keyboard. I'm just having fun with this. 
But now we can shift nudge to move this in place, find wherever we want it to cut, then click on our cutting tool and do control D and move it to the back. If you find out that you want them all a little bit longer, which I'm going to assume I do, I'm going to just stretch that back, nudge it into place. Once again, shift nudge makes it faster. And then I want to reuse this for the next parts. So I'm going to do control D, shift nudge to move that out. And then I'm going to take these and do control G to group. It takes a moment, but just like that, you have got wavy keys. Notice if we zoom in, that gap makes these all separate, even though they would print at once. So what I did for the stand-up version was I put a tiny strip underneath that was less than the full height. Let's make it one millimeter. And I stretched it across the length of the project. So notice it's close, grab the black handle and stretch it all the way to the other side. I will quickly switch to top view and fit view so that I can make sure that's not poking out the other side just like that. There you can see what it looks like from underneath. I'll set it white just because it looks cooler. And once again, top view is pretty slick. I also like flat view for something like this. And it's easy to grab those and do control G to group them. Let's quickly make the black part by simply bringing out another piece, stretching it the full length. You can pick whatever measurements you want. Of course, I do want to set it to black. I like the custom black. And then we can do control D. I'm going to save the original and just use shift nudge to get that into place. And I'm going to do control D again and let's use shift nudge to get this to the thickness I want for that black part. And now I'm going to switch back to perspective view, look at it from a corner, and pick the height I want for that back. So if I type 4, it'll still be cut out, and that'll be the nice solid part that I want. Let's grab these by doing shift select, and then control G to group. Bingo, we can nudge this into place. And then you can see I just added supports on the bottom and the top for it to stand on. Finally, we do need to make the black keys. I'm going to do that by bringing a cube out on top. Notice I'm cruising it on the white. Once again, let's pick the size. I'm going to make it one millimeter thick. And I'm going to make it one millimeter in this direction. Of course, this can be shorter because it's going to be somewhat shorter. And then we simply need to line them up. I'm going to get that custom black again. I'm going to stretch this out longer than I need and then check this out, friends. Control D. Let's do shift nudge to get it to that perfect spot. And when you're done, just let go and do control D all the way across the entire design. I'll scroll back so I can see all the way across. And then we simply need to get the pattern right. It's two with a skip and then three, skip two, and repeat to the end. How cool is that? I do want to nudge these out so they're better for cutting. I'm going to simply hide this one for a moment. And let's grab this whole middle chunk right here and just use nudge to move it down so that it's ready for cutting. I'm going to quickly grab these and nudge them just a little bit further. And now let's bring our part into place, shift nudge to get it close, and then control D and move out to where you want your keys to stick out. You can pick whatever measurement you want, then simply hide this one and do control G to group. How slick is that? Show all. There is our fun keyboard. I do like it better in perspective view. And we also need to click on these and nudge them just a little bit back so they connect. Friends, that is how you make a wavy 
piano. I do want to quickly send a shout out to Paul on Facebook. Great project and thank you so much for asking the question. I do also want to quickly thank my supporters on Patreon. Don't forget there's a link in the description or you can check out the bit.ly on the screen. Of course as I wrap up I want to thank you for watching this video. Don't forget every time you click like, share a video, add a comment or hit that subscribe button. You're helping HL Mod Tech get just a little bit bigger which of course makes my day. Friends have a glorious day and keep tinkering.